Hi guys, welcome to my video blog again. Today, it's been a while since the last video. I've been working a lot, a lot. But I was busy, so yeah, as you can see, linear regulators and so everything for pro power supply project. I've been drawing a lot of schematics and everything was going perfectly until simulation. Well. Actually, the supply is going up very good, except constant, constant goddamn current mode. And what's the problem? You'll see it in a minute. Well, what I basically did, I quite changed my mind about the power supply project. It will actually not be just like the power supply I said at the beginning. It will probably the, it will probably be the power supply that actually grows up with you. What I mean, there will be a main board and there will be uh, some components for it. So, and these components will be like uh, some will be analog, some will be uh, digital, uh, di di digilog and uh, dig digital, and pretty much you just make a power supply you want. So, I started creating this baseboard. I actually got it full drawn here. I just redraw the small part to show you what actually can went wrong when you're thinking oh this will work perfectly and at a simple circuit like this well first I decided to use a p-channel MOSFET for uh, regulating it will be driven by op-amp and of course uh, an uh, transistor. Actually, there is one more resistor here to limit gate voltage, so tr transistor doesn't poof. And well, what is going on? The voltage setting is going perfectly. The voltage is set here. Uh, this op amp drives this transistor. It drives P channel MOSFET and speed channel MOSFET uh, fills output cap and actually gives output. This is then there is then a feedback with uh, five times gain. So uh, so I can actually uh, regulate with 0 to 5 volt um, reference voltage. Now what is going wrong? Well, of course every good power supply must have constant current mode. So I thought, oh, this will be easy. So at the output, there is a load. I am just representing with some block. And there is a shunt resistor for measuring current. So you need to measure current for it to make it constant. And, and it's then compared with maximum current setting. Uh, here I used voltage, I used pot there. It's actually not really the actual, actually. Uh, there are some pre-gain and differential uh, uh, and, and stuff and st it's actually quite more complicated but it's just to show the main design and once this uh, voltage fall on this resistor becomes bigger than this uh, reference voltage it of course uh, op-amp drives this transistor uh, base high this transistor, because there is a resistor here, actually lowers the setting voltage so until the current is, is correct. But there is a little trap here. Uh, op amp has only two states, uh, on and off in this mode. So um, once you uh, reach this current, it drives high and this actually drives uh, voltage directly to zero and then the current drops uh, a lot and it's actually much lower than it uh, is limit and then so actually the voltage then falls all the way down to zero let's imagine this is zero and then uh, this turns it because there is no not enough current. 
to drive this up and high, this transistor is shut down totally and this voltage again swings up. Now, in theory, this should happen actually fast enough for uh, all this stuff not to detect, but actually because of this output capacitor and stuff, everything starts to oscillate. And a bummer, of course it starts oscillating. There's, uh, there's, if I wanted to use a uh, op amp, this uh, in between voltage between high and low should somehow be there should be some saturation voltage and stuff like in transistor. Why? I'll show you in a minute. What constant current actually is? Well, actually, constant current regulator is a device that actually prevents uh, a load to be drived at bigger current than its limit. So, let's make a simple current regulator. Um, so, I've drawn a simple current regulator for driving LEDs. How does it work? Simple. You put there, on top, you put a voltage. So, what voltage? Actually, doesn't really matter. It should be in a range of uh, transistors, uh, max voltage. So, doesn't really matter. It could be from, I don't know, 3 volts, to, I don't know, up to 30 volts, I'm, I have no idea, it's all depending, why? Because it's not voltage uh, driving LED, it's the uh, current driving LED, and why doesn't it, well, actually, because of circuitry down there, and how does it work? At the first, at the, at the begin, there is an enable signal, it's driving there from 10 K ohm resistor, for example, it doesn't really matter the value, it just shouldn't be too high because of this transistor. And for an example, we'll use a BC547 transistors uh, because they're pretty normal and they got uh, uh, the wall activation voltage on base is 0.7 volts. So Let's see what happens. So, the current goes in there, passes the transistor, and there is a, guess what? A shunt resistor. You'll know this, guys, again. In this case, I'll use 15 ohm. Uh, so, once this voltage there, uh, uh, of this transistor's base is high enough to cut it to cut the voltage or to activate this transistor it actually enable uh, it drives enable pin low and what this does it shuts down this transistor and current doesn't flow then it, it's not small enough uh, to uh, actually re-enable this transistor but why doesn't it happen exactly the same as in my circuit for constant current power supply. Well, guess what? This transistor has actually some sort of a saturation voltage. Actually, it's not actually fully activated. Uh, it's not just like a digital component and like it was in my case where there is just high and low settings. So let's for an example represent high and low. It actually can drive more or less current through this. So once this is on the limit, these two transistors actually get in some sort of a uh, balance between uh, between current uh, passing through and uh, cutting it off. So that's why it works perfectly and with perfectly smooth voltage and perfectly smooth current. Not like in my case where it's oscillating. Actually, even though I use the perfectly same me method as in linear uh, this 
regulator chips uh, current limiting mode is it didn't work because of some different parameters like just a small change in some value of the component can put your uh, circuit to instability and that's exactly what happened to me about this small current regulators we just checked here it is it's just that simple just four components and quite cheap actually parts g came all the actually um, I think it's like few dollars few euros I mean few cents actually for all the parts so let's try it out So I've set up some with this with some crocodile clips and I've got my ATX power supply there. Unfortunately you're probably not going to see how I change the voltage. Actually, no matter the voltage I feed in, the current passing through the LED is 40 milliamps in this case. Uh, now I'm feeding in 12 volt, 12 volts. Now let's feed in 5 volts. No, let's see what happens all the way down at 3.3. Uh, actually, at 3.3 volts, the current is actually smaller. It's just 10 milliamps. But that's because it can't even go so far with such a small voltage, like 40 milliamps. So that that's why it happens. And everything stays perfectly cool here because uh, those transistors are 100 milliamps, so it's far beyond their limit. And this, if I plug this LED at 5 volts directly, well, poof, they're probably sh they just burn out well, like um, like they do on on too high voltage so this actually works pretty well now you're probably asking how should I actually determine the voltage uh, the current that is passing through this simple regulator so let me just show you the calculations well when you look at our circuit we see that there is a shunt resistor and actually the fully cut out voltage will be uh, on this shunt is 0.7 uh, volts so 0.7 so this is our, our um, voltage so now we're looking for the current Cur or actually in most cases you're designing this current supply for something so our current we want is, for an example, let's say, in this case, uh, 50 milliamps. This is, of course, just theory. Now, so we're looking for the resistance. And we find it by Ohm's law. And we get somewhere, somewhere close to 15 ohms. But I use this 15 ohm resistor here. Why was it, why, why was current just 40 milliamps? Well, because of these saturation voltages. Uh, this is a uh, thing that can that actually that's why this saturation voltage there is the reason why it cuts off before actually uh, reaching this 0.7 volts. Uh, actually, if we're looking at the HFE amplification, it's probably around 100. It's uh, the current that goes in the base times 100. We get the current that is pulled away from the current limiting resistor. So on the other so. One, so this is pretty 
No, this is just a simple concept current supply that works perfectly. So, hope you liked the video, hope you enjoyed it, and hope you learned something new. Have fun, see you next time.